Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Another day, another plan to discuss. Ito na naman ang inyong hardinerong kapitbahay na sasabing, tara, usap tayo. Hi guys! Buhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim, your hardinerong kapitbahay. Magandang araw mga kapuso, kapatid, kapamilya at mga kapitbahay. Today, we are going to talk about another beautiful philodendron that provides a classic and sophisticated look to our house corner. So, I prefer to call this uh, philodendron as the gentle giants because when this plant matures, it forms a really, really big plant with large leaves and luscious type of leaves, actually. This plant is called, okay, this plant is called philodendron gigantium. Okay, also known as the giant philodendron. But anyway guys, don't worry, hindi ito yung, uh, this is just a juvenile type of the philodendron. But as you can see, kahit na siya juvenile, it is really big na compared with other philodendrons na meron tayo. Okay, so this particular plant it has a leaves that are rich, lustrous green panning out into the huge elephant ear shape as the plant gets older. So, as you can see, uh, para siyang, um, nag-start na siyang lumaki yung dahon. But actually, uh, nung nakita ko siya, yung matured one na galit na giant philodendron, mas malaki pa dito. Uh, if you're able to um, remember yung ating alokasia na um, na mycorrhiza, yung malaking, yung elephant's ear alokasia, halos ganun siya kalaki. Okay? So, given, um, uh, given the right condition of this particular plant, this can grow very quickly into a several feet tall and it could be a good uh, delicate accent plant. So actually this plant is known to be a peeler. Kung siya peeler natin, ito yung mga nilalagay lang natin sa tabi para hindi masyadong um, boring yung isang corner. But actually kahit hindi natin siya or kahit ilagay natin siya, napakaganda pa rin niya actually. Okay? So I saw this one um, kanina. Actually, when we move around the metro, uh, isa sa mga mall, they have this particular beautiful type of giant philodendron. Okay? So, this one got a lush green and gorgeous. So, um, I would recommend this particular plant as a good plant para sa inyo. Pwede itong maging indoor, pwede itong maging outdoor. Okay? So, um, actually, this particular plant has a, um, as you can see, yan yung kanyang... Uh, leaves, yung kanyang juvenile leaves this is actually heart-shaped leaves uh, which are whole and not pinnated. Kasi yung ibang mga philodendron, pinnated siya. Ibig sabihin ng pinnated, may mga cut siya doon sa kanyang pinaka-leaves at is as it matures. Pero ito kasi hindi. Hindi nagkakaroon siya ng pinnate type of leaves. So as you can see also, although hindi pa siya masyadong matured, meron siyang significant yung kanyang underside ng kanyang uh, leaves. Yung kanyang uh, midrib, yung kanyang nasa center na, na veins, that is actually pronounced. At saka doon sa mga site, makikita natin, ay spreading yung kanyang veins. Okay? So, uh, this particular philodendron gigantium is quite like a self-heater. Okay? Meaning, its leaf stalks are stuck up so close. Ibig sabihin, yung makikita natin yan, as you can see, halos wala tayong makikita dyan na stem. Pero as it grows and matures at nagpo-fall yung mga older leaves, doon natin makre-recognize yung kanyang stem. So take note, kung nakita na natin yung stem ng ating giant philodendron, therefore, medyo uh, matanda na yung ating giant philodendron na yun. Ibig sabihin nun. Kasi nakikita na yung kanyang stems. Okay? So at this point, as you can see, juvenile, wala pa tayong makita masyadong stems. Okay? So, let's begin now our repotting. So, let's uh, revisit muna yung kanyang soil. So, um, as you can see, ang ginagamit dito kasing soil is actually, um, they use here rich, loose potting soil mix. Okay? Uh, it is also a well-drained type and highly organic. Okay? Ibig sabihin ng highly organic matter, ibig sabihin marami din siyang mga um, partially, di, uh, partially decomposed ng mga leaves as well as um, partially di, uh, decomposed ng mga, mga branches na maliliit. 
aside from that, it adds up dun sa kanyang pagiging um, moist. Which means, yung mga, yung mga, since na highly fibrous yung mga ganong klase ng, ng, ng organic material, it adds up dun sa moist ng ating soil. Okay? So, in addition to that, pwede natin i-add up yung ating sphagnum peat mo, uh, moss. Pero kung wala tayong peat moss, we could, uh, we could use yung tinatawag nating mga coconut husk. Okay? Coconut husk. Pwede tayong gumamit ng ating mga rice hull. Okay? So, another option that we could use here is actually the, yeah, yung ating cactus and succulent mix. This is actually composed primarily of yung ating tinatawag na, syempre, meron tayong coconut choir, meron din tayo ditong uh, uh, pumice rocks, at saka, syempre, meron tayong um, uh, organic soil na merong mga humus type usually. So, pwede natin siyang gamitin as part of our uh, material. Okay? As part of our material. Doon sa ating uh, plant. Okay. What else? Okay. So, as you can see here, yan. Ipapasin natin. Napaka, napaka ganda ng ating uh, soil. At napaka, ano niya, napaka uh, laki ng kanyang kinocover. So, we are able to see also yung kanyang roots. Okay? Root bound na siya actually. Okay? Pag sinabi natin root bound, nakayakap na yung roots natin dun sa ating pinaka soil. Okay? So, maganda na siyang i-transplant or in pot Okay? So, that is actually one of the best indication na pwede na natin siyang i-repot. Okay? So, um, let's have this one. Of course, I have, I'm going to use here the white pot. And I'm going to have first, siyempre, lalagay natin muna yung ating uh, first part ng soil natin, which is actually a cactus and succulent type of soil. Okay? Para medyo, um, yung roots na nado sa ilalim ay medyo mag-spread pa. Usually kasi pag ganun, nag-spread upward din naman yung ating roots. Okay. There. Ayan. Okay. So, i-spread lang natin. So, hindi natin kailangan siyang, ano, hindi natin siya kailangan, um, actually, hindi natin siya kailangan bawasan ng konti, okay? Um, th that particular soil is just enough. Pero, syempre, I really don't know about this particular plant. Siguro, kailangan natin ng konting uh, bawas na talaga. Kasi nga, uh, when, once we water kasi yung ating plant, ang tendency kasi nito ay lumabas yung water doon sa, sa ating pot. So, we cannot do that already. So, siguro masyadong mataas yung nilagay ko. Pero, tingnan natin. So, let's just press this one. Ayan. So, kawasan natin ako. Okay. In terms of the light, most philodendron kasi, they are actually found doon sa tinatawag natin mga shady area. So, this particular uh, philodendron, gigantium, requires only 70 to 85% of sunlight. And, Uh, to maintain primarily yung kanyang leaves that are rich, uh, rich green type ng ating dahon. Okay? Although this plant are kind of adapt, adapted dun sa, dun sa ganong klase ng conditions um, na medyo shady yung kanyang material. But as you can see, deep green yung kanyang, kanyang, kanyang leaves. Okay? So, just try to imagine. So, this particular plant are getting as much sun at it as it could get doon sa kanyang uh, kanyang shady environment kasi nga importante sa kanya yung uh, yung yung process ng tinatawag nating photosynthesis okay so um, if you want to uh, put this one indoor definitely you have to uh, put this one also sa syempre sa shady area ng ating uh, bahay but definitely pwede rin naman siya doon sa may may area na window para magkaroon tayo ng available na sunlight, okay? Or filtered light, okay? So, as it grow, as it gets bigger and faster, uh, we have to use here semi-bright filtered light, okay? Pero, wag na wag natin siyang ilalagay sa direct sunlight. Kasi nga, as you can see, uh, it could really boost yung tinatawag natin, not boost, actually, we could, uh, they could uh, really inflicted with yung tinatawag natin sunburns. And yung, yung process ng sunburn kasi, hindi naman siya reversible. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng mabago. Pag, nas, pag na damage na yung dahon, talagang totally damage na yung dahon. Hindi na siya makaka-recover. Okay. 
So, in terms of watering, hindi kailangan ng ating uh, philodendron gigantium ng, um, ng maraming maraming tubig. Well, the, the thing here is, the secret here is we should be able to have this particular plant, yung kanyang pinaka-soil medium ay moist. Okay? So, kasi nga, pag masyado naman itong uh, basa o yung nagka-clog yung water, the tendency of this one, it, it will definitely introduce uh, fungus, uh, fungus doon sa kanyang roots, tapos magkakaroon siya ng tinatawag nating rotting ng ating mga uh, mga roots. Okay? So, um, so kung if, we're, if in case na gusto natin na gusto natin na siya idiligan, so the tendency of this one is, kailangan muna natin hintayin na mag-dry up muna yung ating ating soil mix, tapos saka natin siyang i-drench ng maraming water. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, in terms of the temperature, uh, since the, this particular plant grows in an um, area where is tropical. So, kung siyempre, definitely kasama ang Pilipinas dyan. So, ang magandang temperature for this particular plant is uh, 13 to 27 degrees Celsius. Enough lamang siya katulad ng mga, uh, mga mga plants na understory. Ibig sabihin, nasa ilalim ng ating mga uh, mga puno sa, sa kagubatan. Okay. So, in terms of humidity, so this particular plant loves humid environment so it is actually a good thing if you have a very humid environment and that actually boosts the growth of philodendron gigantium okay so if for example you don't have that particular environment so we could uh, provide uh, alternative way para magkaroon tayo ng highly humid environment by just putting some rocks uh, sorry, sorry a basin na may rocks tapos may water ilagay natin sa, sa top yung ating pinaka plant. So, we have to keep this humidity above 60% for the best results for the growth and health of this particular plant. And also, to maintain the freshness and shiny of this uh, plant. Okay? Now, uh, fertiliz uh, fertilizer. So, do we apply fertilizer? Well, especially during the time that it is actually uh, growing, this particular plant really needs fertilizer. But actually, yung mga commercial na fertilizer, yung mga synthetic fertilizer, um, hindi. Hindi na kailangan siya. Kasi we have already an available organic material such as decompose leaves at saka mga maliliit na branches. So, okay na yun. Wala na tayong problemahin doon. So, uh, I think it will sustain primarily yung mga material na yun. Okay? So, uh, there are ways on, okay, in terms of the propagation, there are ways on uh, pro of propagating this particular plant. But the most uh, pinakamaganda, the most um, um, practical para hindi natin masira yung kanyang structure is to wait for the for the plantlet or yung tinatawag nating offsets ng ating philodendron. Katulad nitong plant na to, this plant is an offset of a bigger philodendron. Okay, so hindi siya, hindi mo kailangan, kasi yung, unlike with the other philodendron na you could cut it by halves, yung, yung certain branches kakat mo tapos saka itatanim mo. No, this one is quite different. So this one, uh, mas maganda kung ilalagay mo siya as an offset. So when, yung pinaka-anak na nung ating philodendron. Pero syempre, it will take time. Okay? Kaya siya mahirap, alag, uh, mahirap siyang i-propagate in that case. Okay? For the potting naman, uh, sabi, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, we have to wait until this plant is root-bound. So nakita natin kanina, yung kanyang root system really, really, really love hugging the soil. Okay? So yun, that is the best way for us to determine if the plant needs a repotting already. Okay? Pero um, another thing here is we don't have, as you can see, hindi natin tinanggal yung soil doon sa pinaka kinakapitan ng ating plant. Kasi it will really dis, uh, destroy yung root system as well as pad, pwede tayo mag-cause ng damage doon sa mga roots niya. And definitely pag nagkasugat siya, it will require again or another resting period para mag-dry up lamang yung sugat na kinuate natin doon sa kanyang roots. Okay. So for the potting, large plant, requires a repotting of up to 2 to 3 years. So, ganun siya kaganda. Pero as this one, maybe next year, ng ganitong panahon din, I have to repot this one into a bigger pot para mag-provide ng additional root system for this one. Okay? So, um, what are the uh, the things na pwede natin ma-identify ma as the problem? Well, if you're able to observe some irregular tan patches sa kanyang dahon, 
Okay? It means to say that it could be inflicted with some of the bacterial infections. Like, for example, Erwinia blight, or we are able to find their Pseudomonas leaf spot. So, just, just irregular tan patches. Okay? Do sa kanyang dahon. So, yun ang possible na maging problema natin. Okay? So, the best thing that we have to do is to isolate the plant and cut those things na infected tapos saka natin siya sunukin. Okay? Or itapon. Or ibaon. Okay? Now, if you're able to observe naman dark patches on the leaves, definitely, it means to say that it is exposed to sa cold draft. Okay? Or yung mga tinatawag natin malalamig na na hangin. So, for example, the, here in the Philippines, wala tayong problema sa cold draft. Pero pag inilagay natin siya sa air conditioning unit na tinatamaan ng hangin to, so that means to say, we could create some dark patches on the leaves. Now, how about if there is a sudden wilting of leaves or yellowing? Well, actually, that is typical to a plant, especially if that is that plant is already old. Okay? So, pwede mayroon tayong tinatawag na replacement. But, if that is not normal, well, that means to say meron tayong overwatering and also we are uh, facing the fact na meron tayong root rotting. So, the, base, the best way to identify the, the, that particular problem, we have to uproot the plant and change the soil mix para makita natin at maagapan natin yung change o yung ating ating plant, okay, para mas safety natin, okay, against fungal infection. So, we are not going to reuse that soil, soil mix na ginamit natin kung saan nag-yellow yung ating, ating philodendron. Instead, we have to replace that particular soil, okay. So, yellow leaves, brown leaves, so that means to say also that this is actually underwater, okay. Um, pero, siyempre, sabi ko sa inyo, wag naman uh, our water. Kasi the same the same symptoms ang nangyayari. Pag nag-turn into yellow ang leaves, either or, dalawa lang yan. Underwater or overwater. Now, pale color ng leaves, definitely it lacks primarily the ano, the the sunlight or the filtered light. So, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, we have to place this one into a, an area in our house na mayroong filtered uh, light. Okay? Now, common pests. Okay? Common pest, of course, uh, this gigantium uh, pelodendron, uh, definitely one of the common pests nito ay yung natawag nating uh, apids, moths, fungus nuts, mealybugs, scales, shore flies, and drips. So, marami siyang mga um, pests. But this particular pest only manifests pag bata pa, katulad nito, juvenile pa yung ating uh, pelodendron gigantium. Pero pag malaki na, nako, napaka uh, napaka uh, uh, tag doon um, uh, hindi na siya na, na nagkakaroon ng any uh, infections or any uh, manifestations ng ganitong mga klaseng insects siguro kasi matigas na yung kanyang mga dahon unlike this particular philodendron mabata pa siya malambot pa juicy pa yung kanyang mga stems okay so guys i think that's all folks you're watching planting with Epen grace and dami kong sinabi sa inyo i do hope nakuha niyo lahat yun and you have already some listing of that particular information for the gigantium or for philodendron gigantium okay so please watch and subscribe to our youtube channel and also we would like you to please have some comments suggestions or anything that you want to say pero be ano be tick be uh Ang tawag ito, um, sana yung, yung comments ninyo medyo maganda ng konti in terms of uh, how you're going to deliver it. Okay, so thank you. And also, you may add to your FB page, si Maria Gracia at ang Lihim na Hardin. See you again next time. And thank you very much for continuously watching our video. And goodbye.